Hi, and welcome to section 2.7, Measures of Spread of the Data. We're going to be talking today about standard deviation and variance and how they are used to measure how far apart the data is. We're going to start with an example. Here's a list of all the close friends of Jasmine. The mean of their ages is 41.5, but you can see no one is exactly 41.5. They're either older or younger than the, the average. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate deviation and, and get, get, to get us a feel for how spread out the data is. So we're going to walk through this calculation here. You will not be asked to do this by hand on a quiz or test. We're going to be using Excel to calculate this from here on, but I did want you to see how the calculation worked once. So hang in there and just follow along. So as we remember, the average age is X uh, 41.5. So what we're going to calculate first is how far each individual age in the data set is away from the average age. So for example, if the average age is 41.5, 41 is a half year smaller than it, right? 38 is three and a half years less than it. 47 is five and a half years over it, et cetera. So what we did is we calculated the deviation from the mean for each of the data, point, data points. The problem is the sum of this is always going to be zero. Let you sit down and think about that one on your own, why that's always going to be true, but it is always going to be true. And that's not very helpful. Once we add these guys up, we always just get zero. So we need to do something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, fine, okay, we're going to look at all the deviations, how far they are from the mean. We'll square each one. That way, if it's below or above, it'll still count the same amount. Maybe it's um, half year below or half year below, but still above, it's still a half year away. So we square all the deviations, making all those numbers positive, and we add those up, and that number is called the variance. And in this example, it's equal to 88.5. So here's our sigma notation. What I did was I each data point minus the mean squared and add them all up, we get 88.5. To make it an average, we're gonna divide by the total number of values in the data set. There was 10, so the average is 8.85, all right? So the variance is 8.85. So unfortunately, 8.85 has the units squared years, right? Square ages, because we subtracted the ages and then we squared them. This makes it hard to sort of interpret in a real life problem. So what we're going to do now to make those units a little better is we're going to take the square root of that value. That way our units are just ages. And we, this new statistic is called the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So here was my variance, 8.85. And here is my standard deviation, 2.97. All right. So when you calculate these from a sample, we actually are not going to divide by the total number of values like we did in this example. We divided by, because this was her entire list of friends, we divided by all 10 friends. When we actually calculate the sample standard deviation, we're going to calculate by one less from the number of items. So to summarize, it's going to be used S squared for sample variance, and we'll use the command just VAR in Excel, and a capital S for, um, and we're going to use the capital S the square root of S squared for standard deviation. And in Excel, we're going to use the command standard deviation. And most of the time, we're going to be talking about the sample standard deviation and the sample variance. For the entire population, like if we know, we know every single data value for the entire population, we would divide by N as we did in our example. <laughs> we use the symbol sigma squared for the variance. And in Excel, we would use the command variance PA, that stands for population, VARPA. And for the standard deviation, we use the symbol sigma. And in Excel, we use standard deviation with the PA at the end. Again, most of the time, we're going to be using just the, stand, the, the sample standard deviation and variance. Um, why do we do this? Well, the answer to that question is really beyond the scope of this class. If you want to find out more about this, you need to just keep taking more statistics. I, I would, it would take me a really long time to explain here why we do this. but. For now, I ask you to just trust me that N minus 1 gives us a better estimate of the population variance. All right, now we're going to use Desmos to calculate population variances and standard deviation, and also sample variances and standard deviation. We're going to start from a completely blank Desmos um, graphing calculator screen, so you can see exactly how to do this um, by hand. So let's get out of PowerPoint here, maybe. There we go and go to a, uh, your web browser and go to Desmos Scientific Calculator. So desmos.com backslash calculator. 
All right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this data into Desmos. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the plus sign and we're going to choose table and we're going to type our data in the X1 column. So the numbers are 41, 38, 39, 41, 38, 39, 45, 47, 41, 44, 41, 37, and finally, 42. All right, so we entered all our data into the X1 column of Desmos. And now let's go ahead and we're going to calculate the population variance and population standard deviation. So what you can do is go to your functions button, your keyboard buttons, and go to functions and go to statistics. And you see there's two choices for um, standard deviation and there's only one choice for variance. So there isn't a quick button for population variance, but what you can do is let's start with um, standard deviation. And the P stands for population. So standard deviation of a population is standard deviation P, and then we're just going to put in X1 because that's the data we're interested in. Oops, I didn't mean 10. And it tells us the standard deviation of the population is 2.97. Now let's pick just regular standard deviation. So that means sample standard deviation. If we don't say anything, standard deviation X1 is 3.14-ish. Let's do the same for variance. Choose function. We just have regular variance. There's no P at the end. But you can actually just go back and type in a P. It just isn't used very often, so there's not a shortcut. So variance population, we put in X1. And there's our population variance. And just our regular variance, we just type in VAR X1. So you can see you can either go through the functions and select them, or you can actually just type the command VAR X1 to get your sample variance. And again, remember the ones with the P's are the population computations. And the ones with nothing are the ones that stand for the sample. And you can either select them in the functions menu, or you can just go ahead and type them in. All right, let's talk about comparing standard deviations. Let's look at the chart before, below. This is going to be some data from, I made this up. This is data from sales of three different stores located in Portland, Detroit, and Baltimore. Their store is of the same size, um, and it reports their mean sales per day and their standard deviation. When you look at the data, you can see that their mean sales per day are, are above the same, but the standard deviations are very different. What does that tell us? Well, the larger your standard deviation, the larger your data is from the average value. So each day, they're going to have a larger variability in sales if you have a larger standard deviation. If your standard deviation is smaller, that means that distance from the mean to each data value is smaller and you're going to have less deviation or less range of values for the, for the data. So if we look at this data, that means that the sales in Portland are way more variable per day than the sales in Detroit. So Detroit, Portland might have $2,000 one day and $10,000 the next and zero and really wide, wide values, where Detroit is going to have values pretty similar every single day. And Baltimore is in between those two. Let's look at another example. Just looking at these two data sets, don't use Excel, don't use your computer, just look at them. And which one do you think is going to have the bigger standard deviation? Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can figure it out. All right, which one do you think had a wider range of values? The top one. The top one has a bunch of ones, a couple fives, and nines. Both of these have a mean of five. That gives you a standard deviation of 3.77. These guys are all really close to the mean of five. It only has a standard deviation of 0.94. So again, remember, bigger standard deviation, bigger range of values of your data. Smaller standard deviation, smaller range of values of your data, and your data is going to sit closer to that mean. That's all for section 2.7.